This Sunday on Press Pass, the owner of the Chilcam plant in Youngstown is put on notice. With little movement on the deal that promised to bring jobs to the city's east side, the owner now has 60 days to hit benchmarks that it missed in recent years. Youngstown Mayor Tito Brown and the city's law director holding a press conference this past week detailing the deal that has yet to materialize. The plant was supposed to be manufacturing self-chilling cans, but now it's possible those plans could be put on ice altogether. Joining us this morning to explain the issue and go a little more in depth from the city's perspective, Youngstown Mayor Tito Brown, thank you for joining us here on the Weekend Morning Show. Thanks for having me. Good morning to you as well. Yes, it is Easter weekend. Before we get to this story, I wanted to ask you, we had a deadly shooting over the weekend, Saturday morning at Utopia. It's a club. Uh, you actually went to the scene. What can you tell us about the incident and how could it relate or does it relate to the continued rash of gun violence that we are seeing in the city? Lindsay, I right now I have no details. I'm waiting to um, get a full briefing uh, from the chief and the detective. So uh, as of yet last night, they were still processing the scene. So I, I really don't have any any more details than just uh, what was released in the news. Got it. Uh, one of the things that you had mentioned not long ago on the weekend morning show, you said that you and the chief were in contact with ATF and the U.S. Marshals uh, out of Cleveland, the Violent Fugitive Task Force. I'm wondering, are you going to reach out to Pete Elliott? Are you going to reach out to the folks at ATF and say, hey, we need to take whatever we're doing now to the next level? Have you had those conversations or even thoughts that you might have to do a little more here? Well, no, the chief, chief has had a conversation with Pete Elliott and his team, the U.S. Marshals. And I think the chief is really uh, continuing to ramp up efforts. Uh, if you know, we see that one one issue is uh, or one of our, our tactics not working, he continues to add layers to that. And I think it's just a matter of time uh, before we're going to find these individuals. And we're small, talking about a small, small minute uh, group of individuals who are committing these crimes. Uh, and there again, I, I say this a lot that a lot of times these individuals know one another. There's a relationship, uh, good or bad, with one another. And we want to make sure that we we continue to try to stop. The feuding back and forth. Yeah, they had a heavy uh, security presence, according to the ad for the show that was playing. This was being used as a concert venue. Do you know anything about whether any of those individuals were there at all, or that they may know someone there? Yeah, I do. I do not know, um, Lindsay. When I when I get, get I was on a scene. Uh, there were two scenes going on. One was inside the club, and then one was at the hospital. And I do not have any more details uh, on any of that at at this point. Okay. Well, we'll wait for more information from your office and sure. the police department. Now, moving on, though, you know, we are in year two, I think, of the 10-year, 75% tax abatement. The city provided the company with a grant as well for this chill cam plant. What are some of the several benchmarks that the company missed, and which ones stand out to you that are really paramount here? You know, the one is that for jobs, that, that that's the one that really uh, created a, a sense of urgency for me that, you know what, we, we said we would give you public funds. And these public funds, uh, first of all, we should have never been used for this deal, but that was prior administration, prior to me becoming mayor. I inherited this deal. And in trying to work to see, okay, at the end of the day, I really wanted jobs for the citizens of Youngstown. And when those benchmarks were not hit, and we continued to have uh, three buildings that were non-productive, and then I asked the, what's our legal, you know, what's my legal protection? or What's my legal process? What ha needs to happen next? And I was advised by our outside counsel, here's, here's the process you need to take. Uh, we sit, sit down, we sat down, we had a few conversations with the owners and his team. And we, we really, Lindsay, I heard the same conversation that I heard this year, that I heard last year, the year before that. And I just said, we, we have to take legal action because it appears that we're not going to get anywhere just having conversations with no production. And I, the, the main production that I wanted to see happen were jobs for the citizens of Youngstown. And you did send the owner, Mitchell Joseph, of the CEO of Joseph Company International, 60-day legal notice to meet those outlined benchmarks that you agreed to, or well, the city agreed to before you took office. How optimistic are you at this point that the owner will even be able to follow through on any of it? You know what? I'm really not sure, Lindsay. That, that's a better question for him. Uh, I can't speak for uh, what, he, what he's doing. I just know that uh, from my, my standpoint, I have a job as mayor. Um, I took an oath four years ago, and I'm I'm leaving up to that. I want to make sure that that if there's something that we can, we can do to help them to make it happen, that's fine. I think the onus is right on what's on him at this company at this time. All right. Well, this was several days ago, midweek, that you made this announcement. So it sounds like you're not in communication with this owner. So are you going to hear anything from them at any future date? Have they reached out to you or said they'd have any type of update? You know what? We we don't. I have not have had any uh, communications that passed through our, our, our outside counsel. 
So I, I look forward to that if that happens. Um, however, if not, uh, we'll, we'll keep process, doing the legal process that, um, from our side. Interesting. Uh, you know, the timing of this move is called into question. It was, you know, mentioned to you that you are up for re-election. My question simple for you. How soon did you realize this was becoming an issue? And why did you decide to act now? You know what? I think if we, we would have not gone into a COVID-19 pandemic uh, last year, and if the communi communications with the company had not mentioned that they had they had actually been uh, pandemic had hit them as well, uh, it would have been it would have been year in a year before. Uh, but we were in a, a global pandemic, so I mean, for individuals to say, well, uh, it's a, it was political. The problem is that I still have a job to do, Lindsay. Um, I'm I'm a, I'm a four year mayor, so uh, this happened three years and, and four months into my administration. If it would have happened last year, people would have said, well, not soon enough. Or if I didn't do it, someone would say, you should have done it. So um, I, I'm doing what the job I was hired to do. And it just just the timing is right now that I, 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 we were at the point where this is, the, this is our next step. Yeah, and you were hopeful for these jobs. When was the last line of communication you had with the owner? I want to say it was within the last month. Uh, we had a via Zoom conversation uh, with Mitchell Joseph and his team uh, and my team here in the city. and we. We talked about these issues, and I, I there was no, I was not shy about it. Neither was my, um, my my legal team to say, listen, we have to continue further, and legal pro uh, procedures uh, would be our next step. Now, there's a clause within the agreement that allows the city to take back the property if he continues to miss these deadlines. If you get to the end of the 60 days, you haven't either a heard from them or you've not gotten a reasonable response on the actions that they say they will take. What are you going to do with the property? And do they have to take physical actions to make you happy, or will word of mouth, a verbal agreement, be good enough for you? You know, first, I, I want to make, like, make sure my legal team gives me the the, uh, the direction that we need to take. Uh, we'll follow all legal steps first. You know, I don't want, you know, verbally would not, would not, would not be a, a agreeable for, for me. I need something in writing, but I need tangibles. I need some tangible um, outcomes that if, if jobs are, are the issue or the property uh, reverting back to the city. So I need some tangible return um, in the next 60 days. Got it. Now, I want to turn now to the COVID relief funds because this is another big story. The city is supposed to receive $88 million from the latest COVID-19 relief bill. That's a lot of money. Only a portion of that money can be used within the city's general fund when you look at the budget. So, you know, manpower, some of the expenses you have for certain departments. Do you have any upcoming projects, capital improvements where you could use this money otherwise? You know, there's there so so many options that we, we have. Um, just, to, just to name a few, Lindsay, you, you mentioned there, there are, there's um, a provision in there for revenue replacement. So that's one. But infrastructure is another. Um, we've talked about that what I want to see first and foremost is that we have a, a comprehensive plan. And the plan needs to include uh, input from the citizens, from the mayor, from city council, from our community partners, both private and public. But also, I think we need to make sure that we, we measure twice and cut once on this, this uh, money that we're getting. This is a legacy opportunity. And I've, I, I said it on my Good Morning America State of the City address that I think that we have so many things that we could work on. But there's so many other uh, shared values that we can share with others as well, um, a, a, a full-scale grocery store. We have uh, high food insecurity. We have high infant mortality. These these are some those are maybe some brick and mortar issues that we can face. Uh, youth employment. There are so many other many options that are out there. Uh, but I just want to make sure it's a full scale comprehensive plan because we're not going to get this opportunity. Uh, but once in my lifetime, I can't say for anyone else, but I think this is going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity for the city in the Mahoney Valley. Yeah, you say you want uh, public input. Would you? leave this open to maybe voting for some of these issues of what you would spend the money on? Uh, would you bring in a consultant? How would you keep this transparent, this process, because of the amount of money that's on hand here? Sure. I think that's that's going to be a key piece for us. And I, I did talk about um, actually an a outside firm to, to do the a comprehensive plan. But I also like to have a compliance officer. I, and I want to bring someone in who's their job is to make sure that we're spending the dollar appropriately. Um, and yeah, I think we're going to have input from the citizens, whether it's through a vote or surveys. Uh, we're open to all options, and we, we want to make sure uh, we all suffer through this this pandemic, and we're continuing to suffer. And those who lost their their loved ones right now, our prayers would still go out to them. But also, those are people who are still suffering from COVID, the long haulers. So we want to make sure that this has a great impact on our community, not just this year, but for generations to come. All right, thank you so much, Mayor Tito Brown, for joining us this morning here on Press Pass.